city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. This is the word of the Lord that came to me, that, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. St. Paul says that the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. But elsewhere, he writes, our Savior Jesus Christ has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So which is it? Is death defeated, or does it still remain the enemy? And if it is defeated, then why do we still die? And if it remains the enemy, how can we defeat what seems to be then an unconquerable foe? These questions about death haunt us daily. Even if you're not thinking about it, they do secretly haunt and torment your conscience. But this is especially vivid then when we come face to face with death. We have developed many coping strategies as dying people. We ignore death thinking it might never come for us. We avoid death with the dream of eternity by pumping our bodies full of pharmaceuticals and experimental supplements and replacing body parts. Even upgrading them is the new trend, as the hope of the transhumanists will give you, to tr transcend death they falsely believe and proclaim. Or we could treat death as a friend, as some have, normalizing all the ways of death, abortion, suicide, euthanasia. We fail to grieve over miscarriage and stillbirth, somehow acting as if it's not a dead child, or maybe less than human. Another way that we cope as dying people is to eulogize the dead, attempting to give them eternity, but through our memories. Or we'll add pomp and circumstance to our dying, trying to gussy it up with spectacle and earthly beauty. We also avoid the reality of death by diminishing the body to ashes or to the increasingly popular human composting. We refuse to call a funeral a funeral, but instead now the hip phrase is a celebration of life. But despite all our avoidance and withdrawal from the reality of death, it doesn't change. St. Paul is correct. It is the last enemy to, to be defeated in us, future tense. But it will be defeated as Christ Jesus has already put all enemies under his feet, past and present tense. Both of these things are actually true simultaneously. Both the enemy will be defeated and the enemy has already been abolished. This is another way of confessing the truth, that we are simultaneously sinners according to our flesh, dying, and saints of God in the forgiveness of sins, alive in eternity. This conflict between, well, are we dead or are we alive? Are we dying or will we live forever? This was in the mind of Martha at the funeral of her brother, Lazarus. On that day, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. So Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Future tense. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am present tense, the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? John 11. 
Do you hear what Jesus is saying to Martha? Yes, your brother has died, and he will live in the resurrection, future tense. But so far as Jesus is concerned, the dead do not die. They already now live in him, present tense. Our churches describe this paradox with a shorthand phrase, maybe you've heard it, the already and the not yet. On the one hand, we die and are laid to rest in the grave and await the resurrection of the dead. This we will do tomorrow for our dear sister, Kelsey. Death is the last enemy to be defeated. But on the other hand, we already live in the resurrection with Jesus. Because he lives, we will never die. Death is abolished. Kelsey lives. This truth defies reason and experience. And yet it is believed and confessed. For the sake of faith, then, believing, Jesus gave his prophets of old to raise the dead. We heard one of those stories today about the widow's son at Zarephath, whom God restored to life again already by Elisha. Elijah, excuse me. And then later we'll hear 